Think about the most confident, self-assured person you know. What is it about them that really appeals to you? Is it the way they move? Their tone of voice? The way they seem to be able to command the respect of the room? There are lots of references for what that looks like. When I think about confidence, I think about Miranda Priestley, Meryl Streep's character in A Devil Wears Prada. Remember her? Or even Kerry Washington as Olivia Pope. There is a slight difference between self-confidence and self-esteem or self-concept. Self-esteem, self-concept, that's a lot more involved. It's how we feel about ourselves when no one else is around, how we perceive our intrinsic worth. Self-confidence, however, is determined a lot by external factors. And therefore, it's changeable. It's something we can impact and shift. I look good, I feel good. I have a really great meeting, I'm walking on clouds for the rest of the day. So how can we boost our self-confidence? How can you show up in a way that you want to? Would you believe me if I said that I was really shy? Many of my friends wouldn't either. <laughs> but I was one of the shyest people I've encountered. I had a hard time showing up in especially big public contexts, but even in more interpersonal situations, one-on-one. -on -one, I felt awkward or like I didn't quite belong. Like I couldn't hold my own in a conversation because I was constantly running a script in my head and analyzing what it was I was saying. And how did I overcome that? Well, although it's still tricky in many situations because it's not all perfect all the time, I did something that the great Beyonce has done to great effect in creating her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. I thought about what would someone I would like to be like do? And I did that. I'm going to share some tips today that may help you do the same. The most impactful thing on how you see yourself is your self-talk. If you're constantly running a script in your head that's saying things like, oh, that was so silly, why did you say that? Oh, no one wants to hear that. Then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You really want to work on your self-talk game. Try monitoring what it is that you say to yourself. What are those messages and where do they come from? How can you impact them so that you are giving yourself feedback that's going to help you take the steps you want to and show up in the way that you want to? Thankfully, there's a video for that. Take a look at it in the description. Working on your self-talk can make you someone who's a lot more prone to seeing setbacks as temporary. Can have you be kind to yourself in a way that motivates and inspires you can have you hold yourself accountable by setting positive goals and creating action plans that will help you achieve what you want to. Rather than being constantly negative and self-critical and having a script on constant loop that actually detracts from your goals. This next one may sound a little contradictory because all of these points are about things you need to do, but it's not all about you. When you're interacting or communicating with another person or group of people, focus on them. That has the dual benefit of getting you out of your head so that you're minimizing that potential for negative self-talk and stop being so self-critical and giving you the confidence of being received well by the person that you're speaking to. It takes a little bit of practice. Being a good listener is hard. There's a video on that too, in how to give good feedback. I have a friend who's really great at this. He fades into the background and really holds space for other people. And if you remember that Maya Angelou quote about people will forget what you said or did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel, then you know the confidence boost that you can get from being the kind of person that people want to be around. Are you a little secret? Many people are in the negative self-talk game and are being super self-critical. So you being able to give that to them will be a gift to both of you because it'll help boost your confidence and theirs. Celebrate your wins! Ever heard of imposter syndrome? That thing where you feel like you haven't earned the space you're occupying? Well, one way to minimize that is by taking the time to internalize the successes that you have. If you're constantly looking at the things you need to do better or the things you've done wrong, then it's really difficult to build up that internal evidence for all the ways in which you have showed up well. And that can detract from your confidence. Make sure you're taking time to take stock of the things that you've done well. 
make sure you're noting all of the ways in which you've really aced it this week. Another huge boost for your confidence is getting stuff done. Tony Robbins says that progress equals happiness. He's not wrong. If you want a quick confidence boost, make sure you're not procrastinating on the things that you need to achieve. When you've set yourself goals and targets, you've broken them down into bite-sized chunks, you know what it is that you need to do to move forward, then just do it. If you become the kind of person that regularly ticks things off and makes sure that you accomplish the tasks you set for yourself, that can go a long way to really boosting your confidence and making you feel like someone who shows up in that way. Body language. If you're a fan of Grey's Anatomy, you've heard about the power pose. That's where the surgeons stand in superhero type of poses before a surgery. And there is some actual basis for that. As much as I hate the expression, fake it till you make it, it's a little bit like that. Neuro-linguistic programming says that when you shape your body in certain ways, then certain emotions can't live there. So think about what sadness looks like in your physical form. So do you slump your shoulders? Do you feel down? How about nervousness or reticence? Do you tend to cross your arms, bite your nails? Then those are things that you want to avoid when you're cultivating positive body language. Stand up tall, square your shoulders, make eye contact. That one takes a little bit of practice. Damn it! Think about those examples of confident people that you thought of at the start of this video. What is it about their body language and the way they hold themselves, the way they move, that conveys that confidence? You'll see that there are a few trends. If you emulate those, you will eventually become the kind of person who does those? Confidence boosting, right? A lot of these points are discussed in a little more detail in different aspects in my previous videos. So make sure you go through and check those out if you want a little bit of an, a clue to how you can use them in real life situations. I'll link them again in the description. But basically, if you practice these skills and techniques, it's not self-deception. It's you actually training yourself into a form that will help you exude the confidence that you seek. How do you want to show up? Then show up that way. Hope that you find these helpful. Share any tips that you have in the comments below and engage with the content a little more if you would like to know more about it or share some pointers that you have. Make sure to click like if you liked today's video. I really appreciate the feedback and to share it with anyone who you think may find it helpful too. Next time we're talking authenticity. Something that really conveys confidence is when someone really owns their space and shows up as who they are. But how much of that can you afford? If you're a woman going for a job interview, how hard do you think about your hair? If you have body art like I do, what does that say about you? Can you really take the risk of being who you are all the time? What does authenticity mean? If that's something you want to know more about, then tune in next week. See you soon.